Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to continue implementing our levels. But first, I just have to say, I went ahead and added another note off-screen. Better scratch pad support. I, I know we have our game class and all, but I cannot tell you, I literally cannot tell you just how invaluable it is to have a decently supported scratch pad in your engine. Whenever you're doing game development, or at least if you're doing it the way I do it, it's so invaluable to have just some place in your engine where you can just throw your idea in and see what happens. So, I went ahead and added that. And yeah. Now, one other thing. I went to our resource folder and created a new folder called bitmaps, and that's where I put our level texture from last time, just to show you. There you go, there's a level. And you might be wondering, hey Benny, why'd you put it under bitmaps and not textures? And here's why. Let's look at our texture class for a moment. In our load textures method, well, it loads the texture, and it gives, sends it to the graphics card, gives us the idea, and etc, etc. But, here's the thing. Although it stores our texture on the graphics card, and although there technically is a way to read it from the graphics card, our texture class doesn't provide that. And that's not ideal, so let's go ahead and add another note. Okay, we need better textures, such as reading, maybe bl splitting, maybe basic image processing, I don't know. But we need a better way of using textures. We need some way to, to actually, you know, use these as textures if we're going to be doing anything useful. But yeah. So in the meantime, I'm going to hack my way around it by creating a new class called Bitmap. Which technically should be part of our game, but again, our game has to be part of the engine, so it's still going to be in the engine package. Again, we need some way of inserting the game into the engine, and, you know, I'll go ahead and add that too, why not? Some way uh, to sep separate game and engine data. That, that's also important. So, yeah. Now, with all that, let's create a bitmap. It's going to have a private int width, a private int height, I can spell, and a private int array, pixels. And the pixels, of course, are just going to be all the pixel data in integer format. And if you've never seen pixels on a low level, you might be wondering how that works. Well, it's... actually, this probably isn't the best video for that. Hmm. I'll, I'll think about how I'm going to... Ex if I'm going to explain that in a bit while I keep coding. So, anyway, public bitmap going to take in some int width and int height, and what this is going to do, this.width is width, so just assign for the most part. But here's the interesting thing. Well, maybe not that interesting. This.pixels is a new int array of size width times height. So essentially it's going to be a decompressed two-dimensional array. Why a decompressed two-dimensional array and not an actual two-dimensional array? You'll see when we actually get around to loading this thing. So, with all that, let's go ahead and create getters and setters. So, Alt Shift S, generate getters and setters, and actually I just want getters. So, I don't want to be able to set that. Just get. And I didn't want that at the top. Forgot to move to the bottom, but yeah. And there. Now, one more bitmap constructor. It's going to be public bitmap. And this one is going to take in a string file name. That's right. We're going to have some way of loading it in. And here's how we're going to do that. We're going to use Java's API. Or if you're if you're not following along in Java, and you're following along in C or C++ or Python or what have you, then just use whatever image loading system you used for texture. You can probably do this better than I can. But anyways, we create a buffered image, image, and that's going to equal image io dot read, and it's going to take in some file. So it's going to be a new file taking in the file name, 
dot dot slash res slash bitmaps slash whatever the file name is. Whoops. Oh dear. And with that, um, Java. Okay, that was interesting. So, anyways, and of course, try catch. With that, we now have have at least loaded the data, but now we need to actually put it in our bitmap class. So, width equals image dot get width, height equals image dot get height, and pixels equals image. Well, actually, no, it doesn't isn't done like that. What am I saying? Image dot get RGB. That's what I'm looking for. And this is where it gets a little interesting because we're going to have to read the data from it. So start X and start Y. I want to start at the beginning. I'm just going to load all the RBG data into our bitmap. So width and height. Scan size right here, the very end. I know I'm doing this in a... Oh dear, I'm doing this horribly wrong. You know, I'll, I'll just do it in order now so I don't make that mistake anymore. The RGB array is where we're actually going to store the data. That's our pixel array. Offset, again, don't care about an offset, so zero. And scan size, that's going to be the width. And this is, this, by the way, this is why I'm doing it in a one-dimensional array rather than a two-dimensional array, because this way I can use the image.getRGB method. And what the scan size is, the scan size is just how much it's offset. And, yeah. And by the way, I've decided I'm going to talk about... Wait, I should not offset. This is how much, this is a distance, like, in a row. So it'll save one row of width length, then it'll save the next row in another width length, etc., etc. And also I decided I'm going to talk about pixel formatting when we actually get to reading the pixels, so there you go. And now, I do want some public end just called get pixel, which takes in some x and y coordinate. And that's just going to return pixels sub x plus y times width, I believe. Yes, that sounds about right. And if it's not, well... I'll think about it, just in case. And for some reason... Um... Pixels... Ah! Because I'm setting up like a method, not an array. Okay. And there! We now have, well, we have our bitmap. So, I went ahead and double-checked, and yeah, I wasn't doing anything crazy with my get pixel method. That is how it was supposed to be done. I was thinking correctly. So, but I do want to do one more thing. I want to do public void set pixel, just in case I want to change the data for some reason. So it takes in int x, int y, and int value. And it's going to do basically the same thing, except it's going to assign it to the value. So, there you go. And with that, oh dear, I still want that open. With that, I'm going to go to the game class, and I'm going to create a bitmap for the level. And in my constructor, I'm just going to say level equals bitmap dot... Hmm. Okay, no. No, nothing. I just thought I saw some error, but I don't... I'm not sure about it. I'll see if it's actually a problem. So, bitmap and it's going to take in oh, the file name, right, level1.png. And if you look under bitmaps, that's what I called it, level1.png. So, now that I have the data loaded, just to make sure it's loading properly, what I'm going to do, for i equals 0, i is less than level.getwidth, and i++, plus plus, and Four and j equals zero. J is less than level dot get height. J plus plus. So just a big double for loop. And I'm just going to print it out. So I'm going to do println there. And here I'm just going to do system dot out dot print, not println. And this is just going to print out all the data in one row of the pixel. So actually, okay, no. I think this is actually going to this is going to print it slightly haphazardly, but it should it should prove the point. So, I'm just going to print level dot get pixel sub i comma j. Not jake j, i comma j. And, if I run, 
we crash. Why? Apparently we have no pointer exception somewhere. So, let's see what I did wrong. Return pixel sub x plus y times width, that's correct. Oh wait, is this supposed to be offset by height rather than width? I don't think so. Didn't think so. Hmm. Okay, I'll just debug this off screen, so one moment. And it was actually really simple, I could have just kept recording, but what the issue actually was is you need to initialize pixels to a new int array before you start assigning data to it. So now if I run, then, well, we get our blank window, but more importantly, you see, we have all of our data. It's negative one, where it's white, and it's some insanely small number with when it's not, so yeah. There you go. It is indeed loading our bitmap. Maybe not correctly, but it seems to be loading it correctly enough. And, yeah. So, excellent. Okay, so our next goal is to take this level we just loaded and turn it into a 3D mesh. We need to figure out how can we generate a 3D mesh that represents this image, because remember, we got to make white pixels open areas, and black pixels are just going to be walled in areas. How do we make a big 3D mesh that represents that? And that's our next goal. And here's the really, really big problem we're going to have with that. I'm running dangerously low on video time, and although I could go ahead and get started on that, well, the thing is, by the time I actually started getting anywhere meaningful, the video would run out of time. So I'm just going to go ahead and call the video here. And in the next video, we're going to focus on level generation. We're going to focus on taking this level and building a working 3D world out of it. So thank you. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned. And see you next time.